My name is Liam, beer manager at Bottles in Providence, Rhode Island, and today I am excited about cider. There's a, a long, long history of cider making in the world, and it's something that a lot of people have forgotten about, but it's recently begun making a comeback. Uh, lots of new ciders out in the market for everybody to try. Cider was developed hundreds and hundreds of years ago as uh, a safe alternative to unclean drinking water, just like beer was uh, back in antiquity. If you couldn't drink the water, you need to have some sort of, of liquid to drink to stay hydrated. And one of the safest ways to do that was to ferment a beverage, uh, beer obviously, but also cider. Cider became popular because if, if you think about it, if you spend all year or all summer long growing your grain and then harvesting it, and you've got all this, this wheat and barley that you need to make bread and flour for the rest of the winter, using some of that to make beer is kind of cost ineffective. Uh, it's a lot of labor intensive and there's no real guarantee about what you're going to get in the end. If you start going hungry but you have plenty of beer, you're, you're in bad shape. So another way of creating a, a fermented, safe to drink beverage was to use apples, apple juice, which there's more to it than this, but essentially you can crush up a bunch of apples, squeeze the juice out of them, wait a while, it'll ferment naturally, and then you've got something that's safe to drink that's also a little bit alcoholic. Uh, in olden times, the alcohol content of such ciders was usually very, very low, 2-3%. There's a very long and rich tradition of cider making in Spain, northern Spain, in Asturias, in France, especially in the Normandy region, and in England, where a lot of our New England forebears got their cider making techniques from. When early settlers in the Americas and, and during colonial times were making cider, it was again, it was an everyday beverage. Uh, John Adams famously drank a pint of cider every single morning with breakfast. It was probably, again, about 2% alcohol, not, not a hugely highly alcoholic thing, but it was, a, it was the beverage of choice for Americans and American settlers for a long, long time. That changed during the temperance movement in the late 1800s. Cider began to be a little bit uh, passe and frowned upon by many people. And then prohibition occurred, and a lot of the cider makers in America uh, went out of business, or they started selling their apples to markets uh, as a way to stay in business. After Prohibition ended, cider had pretty much died. When you think of cider, you, you may think of a couple different things. Uh, there's very sweet uh, and juicy ciders out there. Uh, they often come in 12 ounce bottles in a six pack, much like beer, which is why they're often grouped with beer. These ciders are more um, English in style. Uh, the English are known for their sweeter ciders, uh, Strongbow, Magners, Woodpecker, things like that. But there's also another style that's begun to be uh, reinvented here in the States, and that's a, a much drier, almost more of a, a wine-like style of cider. These ciders are made with apples that are grown specifically for making cider. They have goofy names, they're remarkably bitter, and they have a lot of tannins in them, which is good for cider making. What are tannins? Tannins are a chemical compound that are uh, present in most fruits, especially grapes, and these ciders, it's, a, it's an astringent quality. It, it, it dries out your teeth, it takes the, the spit out of your mouth, it dries out your mouth, and it makes your mouth water and want more. It's something that's highly desirable in a lot of wines. Uh, that's why a lot of wines are aged in oak, because oak also imparts a lot of tannins to, uh, to a finished wine. Well, much in that same way that a winemaker will choose certain grapes for, for juiciness or sweetness or extra tannin or extra acidity, cider makers can do the same thing. There are hundreds of different varieties of cider apples. They, they tend to be little, tiny little things. They're inedible. When they're crushed, the juice that they give up is intensely flavored. And when it's then fermented and allowed to sit for a while, you get some really beautiful flavors that you wouldn't think of when you think of farm stand cider. It's something you get in a, in a plastic jug at the grocery market. These ciders have more flavors of uh, stone fruits, some minerality to them, crushed rocks, dried apricots, figs, really delicate, light floral notes. They're really quite interesting if you ever get a chance to taste them. In order to explore some of these flavors, we went up to Lebanon, New Hampshire and met with the good people at Farnham Hill Ciders and Poverty Lane Orchards. I blended the press according to the crop and what I think the fruit's like. Then we do a bunch of fermentations that are all aimed at being blended later. Mm -hmm. We mature the things for months, 
or sometimes years in tanks or barrels. You've seen those. Mm -hmm. um, then you know, during that whole time, we are blending stuff. We're moving things from one tank into another, putting a few things together, trying to figure out how to make something that's a little closer to the, to what we are ultimately going to want to do. We're tasting barrels, so you know about some of those high acid varieties. Those are our fine dial turners. But when we're blending to make a batch of Sunny Dry or Dory or whatever, we're not thinking we need 42% Davinette. Right. We're thinking what does that smell like and what does that taste like and what does it need? You know, I'm, I'm delighted. There's all this interest in cider now. We're selling a lot of this kind of juice to, to cider makers in ugh, Oregon and Minnesota and Colorado and Virginia while trying to help growers out there grow their own versions of this, which I think will improve, you know, we're trying to improve the general quality of cider. You open a bottle of our cider, we don't want you talking about this stuff, just drink it. Thank you.